So welcome everybody. Uh, welcome here for those of you who joined on Zoom. Welcome on the on the Facebook page if you are watching us there. I am, my name is Katrin Heuser. I'm one of the directors at Little Yoga Space. Um, and super delighted to be joined by Anna Law today, um, who is a health coach and nutrition expert uh, and a dear friend, uh, an excellent chef, and yeah. just knows all that is to know about food. Um, I've had the great pleasure of enjoying her food uh, quite a few times and um, always feel very, very spoiled. So I'm really delighted to, to welcome her here. Um, and or maybe you could just start by introducing yourself a little bit. And what I would really love to, to hear is really how you became a nutritionist. Like what was your, your journey to healthy nutrition? Um, hi, Kat. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I'm super happy to have the chat with you. It's kind of my first one, so um, um, yeah, so um, I am now a health coach, um, specialized in nutrition, but also in autoimmune disease and chronic pain. Uh, this journey took me about four to five years to, to, to where I am now, but my journey is not finished. Uh, well, I was not always a nutritionist, uh, actually before um, I was working in photography, uh, in the um, kind of fast-paced life and fashion in London. And um, yeah, and I think why I become a nutritionist is because um, I become quite ill, um, like about 10 years ago. And it was quite a really difficult journey when I went from doctors to another, got diagnosed with multiple autoimmune disease and no one knew really exactly what, what I had. Um, at the time, 10 years ago, it was like all the gluten intolerance, IBS and all of this was not really fashionable, nice kind of like more open to it. Um, so yeah, I just kind of started with traditional medicine, which didn't really work for me. And uh, about five to six years ago, I kind of tried to look for more alternative approaches. And uh, that's when I and started first to look to Ayurveda, Chinese medicine. Then I came to Portugal four years ago and then I started to, uh, to study at the Institute of Microbiotic in Portugal. Um, that totally changed my life. And uh, now just carry on to learn nutrition is through the integrative functional medicine. So yeah, so this is um, in a nutshell um, where I am now. And um, people can read this on your on your website as well. But the the mm -hmm. kind of studying of the microbiotic uh, principles and changing your diet has you're like really like one of your best own case studies, right? I mean, it's really also changed your your health completely. Yes. Well, um, I try everything on myself. Um, every <laughs> I kind of become really curious when trying every type of. Um, medicine, every new diet, uh, everything like the gluten-free diet, lactose-free diet, fructose-free diet, macrobiotic diet, vegan diet. And um, the thing is, I think that I don't think there's one specific diet which works for everyone. I think it's just, um, each case is really unique. And I think um, because I tried so many things um, and I met and spoke to many people online and in person. Um, it kind of helped me to broaden my knowledge and, uh, and my experience about the nutrition and uh, what's going on at the moment on the, in, the, in this area. So um, I don't know if I answered your question actually, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Well, but what I'm hearing is, um, you know, there's not one size fits all. So this kind of good saying of, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. is not really quite as simple as that, I guess. Um, no. you, know, you mentioned all these different types of uh, diets and these different ways of, uh, of, of structuring your nutrition. So that seems really complicated. 
So you keep telling me, but it's easy to be healthy. This must be like, this must be the, the main question that people ask you, like, what, what can I do? Because it's just, there's so much to get my head around and it's so, it seems so complicated. I don't know whether to go Ayurveda, to go uh, macrobiotics, to go vegan, to go raw, to go cooked, to go, you know, ah, <laughs> there's so much to, yeah. so much to choose from. So where, where do you even start? I know, I think like actually that's the biggest question. That's the first one that everyone's have been asking me. And that was actually the first one I asked myself as well when I started, is how to become more healthy. So sometimes, I mean, most of the time people think if I'm healthy, it means that I will never get sick. Uh, well, that's not true. Actually, if you're really healthy, you should get from time to time sick. Uh, I mean, your body and your immune system needs to be sick from time to time to be able to rebuild itself and to fight um, bacteria and viruses on its own. Um, actually, and the thing is that what is important when you get sick, it's your recovery time. Um, if you're really healthy, then you will get better in two, three days and you just go back to your normal life. Um, what people do, they actually go to the doctors, take medicine, and uh, go back to work straight away. Um, as human beings, I believe that we are really similar to animals. Uh, when an animal gets sick, what does it do? It actually does nothing. It just sleep and rest and, um, and just wait for, to get better. And what we do as human, we don't do any of that. We have to carry on with life. We have to wake up in the morning, we have to work, we have a lot of things to do. And uh, we think that if we take medicine, if we do a lot of things, so magic potion and everything, then we're actually, we're killing the virus and we're getting better. But actually what we do, we actually put a bandaid on top of it and repress it. And what it does, it actually build it, build it inside and your body is not allowed to recover, it, uh, recover by itself. So you actually make your immune system weaker. So yeah, I think when people ask me, when I say to people that being healthy is easy, it is actually easy. I think everyone knows what it is to be healthy. Um, eating like pizza every day is not healthy. Uh, eating ready meal every day is not healthy. Um, working 20 hours a day, seven days a week is not healthy. We all know in, inside of us that what is healthy and what is not. Um, the thing is that when people come to me, most of the time they expect me to give them like a magic potion or like I'm gonna tell them this like super complicated formula. And, um, but actually it's not, it's actually to do nothing and just to really look at your life and, um, the thing, the secret is to really look to be in harmony with yourself in your environment. Um, and this, what this means, it's actually, when it comes to what we, I would like to talk about today, it's about the winter season, which is um, as people and human being, we have to be in harmony with nature. And I think this is the key of being healthy. That's, for example, in winter, it's time to rest. It's time to sleep more, to do nothing, um, not to exercise too much. And um, we do that in the summer. It's sunny, it's bright, uh, everyone is out. And that's the time to do all of those things, to get exciting and everything. But in the winter, we do what nature does. We stay dormant. What, what animals do during winter, they hibernate. And what women, what, what we do, human beings, we actually carry on with life. We are busy, we're running around, it's Christmas time, we have to finish work before the holidays, we, we all are stressed. And this is what is not healthy. And I know it's really easy to say it. Most of the people say, oh, but I can't do this as um, I have a life, I have family, I have work. It's true. I mean, um, don't get me wrong, I used to be in that kind of world uh, when you have deadlines and things to do, things to finish. 
But I think life is a question of choices. You know, you have to make a priority in, in your life. It's what do you really want to do? Do you, This is really the key of being healthy is really to be in harmony with yourself and the, the environments and the season. And yeah, the, this is why I said this is easy in a way is, of course, I'm not talking about people who already have a diagnosis disease or like big um, illnesses or cancer, all of this. This is a completely different subject. But I think like if you're no more constituted person, no like big illnesses, that's, that's where I would like to start to say why is it is easy. So does it make any sense or? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for sure, uh, it really resonates this kind of being in, in, you know, in tune in resonance with with the seasons and, and I think actually, the challenges of this year might have even pushed us a little bit out of out of resonance and out of sync just because everything else was just so much to to deal with and it might just sort of feel like lesser a priority to also really be in tune with nature. Um, I don't know, that's kind of my observation a little bit in, in, in myself. And I had to remind myself, especially kind of when autumn was coming, I was like, okay, so, you know, what does what does autumn really mean? Um, and, and for sure now, as we are, as we're heading into winter, I, I noticed that I really had to remind myself to be more in tune again with, with the seasons. So, you know, but still, so I think I'm quite healthy in general, in what I eat, but in comparison to you, I'm like way not there. <laughs> when I come and I look in your kitchen, I mean, the stuff you have, I've never even heard of. <laughs> so um, let's talk about winter. And I mean, obviously, you know, in general, when it comes to winter, we're always a little bit concerned about our immune system. What are some actual simple to do things that we can implement in our diet specifically to you know boost our immune system what are the seasonal foods to to eat to focus on um and you know what are maybe like the one or two things that if you know if we were just to change that one little thing in our diet then that could already create quite a nice nice change so I'm after some some easy things to implement here what can I do yeah just before to talk about it I just wanted to add like just the quick stories like really briefly that's yeah being it's not always about the foods um people think that if they have like an amazing diet if they eat organic if they buy everything to the local markets and are really expensive food or have like those like super food in their kitchen, they're gonna be healthy. Well, I have two quick stories to say. Um, one of my teacher and uh, when I was studying was telling me a story that once when he was driving in America, he actually took a, um, a guy who was there, just um, um, he was hitchhiking on the road and uh, it, it took him with him and said, oh, where, where would you like to go? I said, oh, I just live a bit further. Uh, if you see a caravan along the road, that's, that's fine. So he went there and the guys to say thank you, said, oh, would you like a drink? And the guy said, no, no, it's okay. I, I don't want a drink. So he poured himself a glass of whiskey. And um, my teachers look at him and say, well, that guy looks a bit, maybe, I don't know, 40, maybe late 40, beginning of 50s. And the guy just opened his kitchen cupboard and just uh, started to make himself some lunch. And uh, in this kitchen, he only had like can of beans, only that. So his kitchen was only a bottle of whiskey and can of beans. And um, my teacher was like, gosh, you know, that guy looks pretty healthy. He doesn't look really old. He looks pretty fine. And uh, he asked him, say, excuse me, but how old are you? And the guy actually was almost 60. And the guy was never sick. Um, and the guy said, would you mind to ask me what you do in life? He said, well, I'm not doing much. I mean, I'm just happy. I'm on my own. Uh, I go from time to time to the main cities to sell some old items. Um, that's it. The key is that the guy has no stress in his life. No stress at all. He was just 
on his own. Um, sometimes he used to go to the main village and uh, meet some friends. He had uh, a social life. It's, um, he had no pressure of, um, of anything. He was his own boss in life in a way. And uh, when I just started my journey as a nutritionist, because I was really sick and uh, I really wanted to do everything perfectly. And I spent so much money buying so many things and uh, like the latest product, the latest vit vitamins, um, buying everything organic and um, make sure that everything I was eating was like clean, no fats, no oil, no sugar. And I was still, I was still sick. And, um, and my diet was perfect and I still didn't understand what it was. And um, that's the thing is somehow food helps a lot, but what is in your mind, actually that's what's gonna make it work. So um, if this, this is what I will talk about a bit further, um, but it's not only about the foods, it's really like everything what's gonna make you healthy. So. This is why sometimes when people come to me, I like to look at everything, what they do, what they live, uh, what they eat, of course, um, who are living with. So um, yeah, it was just like a little bracket just to finish what we were saying before. But yeah, so yeah, about winter. Uh, well, well as, as I said earlier, uh, winter, it's, uh, it's the end of the year. It's a season of hibernation. It's, um, you know, summer, we have fun, autumn, we harvest and collect, and uh, winter, we actually go to bed. And that's what we should all do. Um, actually, it gets dark much earlier. Uh, it gets, the sun doesn't go up as early that in the summer. So um, we should spend more time to sleep, uh, spending more time to rest and meditate and reflect on what we've done the, during the year. Um, it's a time as well when we should eat warm foods, soup, stew. Um, we should not have any cold food, raw food, um, any tropical fruit or vegetable because all of those are summer foods. And um, the raw, cold and tropical actually make your body cold. And in the winter, you need to make your body warm. So this is why you have to eat differently. So um, some people still likes to eat like mangoes or bananas or um, ice cream or ice um, cold drinks, which is not good because your body needs warmth and you actually is actually cold on that side and you bring in more cold on the inside. So you're more likely to have a flu or cold or sore throat or anything. And so it makes your immune system really weak. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. In a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, also in during winter time, you should not exercise too much. Um, most of the people, because it's holidays, they think, oh, I have plenty of time and uh, let's go running for like, I don't know, hundreds of kilometers or do like super like long hiking and everything and snow because when you sweat, actually your body lose minerals. And uh, in the winter time, you need to keep your minerals in and because you're gonna need strength for the spring coming. Um, because in Chinese medicine, winter, um, I mean, each season are related to an organ in your body, to an emotions. And in Chinese medicine, winter is linked to kidney. And uh, kidney are actually associated to your vital energy. So um, it's really important in the way that this is what's going to make you strong for the rest, for the next year. And if you um, spend all your energy, if you do too much exercise, if you're doing too much over winter, then you're going to start spring uh, tired. And... Uh, this is why winter, it's a time to rest and um, kind of tonify your kidney and replenish your energy. So this is why in China, for example, what during the winter time, uh, you will see a lot of people wearing those kidney warmer and you can find them as well in any Chinese shop. 
And uh, most of the people, they like to put scarf around their neck, but people in China just put scarf around their belly just to keep the kidney warm because this is where the, um, the um, energy is and um, it's the most important. So <clears throat> for the kidney, usually it's good to eat um, like food like rice or um, anything like um, bitter food, like cabbages, broccoli, anything wrong, uh, round, like with the shape of the kidney, uh, any black food like black beans, um, kidney beans, azuki beans. Um, so yeah, anything really comfort food, earthy, uh, requires like long cooking, um, stew. Um, yeah, like, like anything yeah, a bit salty, um, not, too, not too spicy, not too dry. Um, like what really what our grandparents used to, to eat in the past. Sometimes it's really good to look at our ancestor, what's what people used to do, what people used to eat. Um, it's usually good to look at what your grandmother or your grand grandmother used to do over winter. But you, I think every culture have this kind of stew, this like winter stew that we have and uh, or soup. And um, this is what we should eat um, during the winter. And even with fruits, um, it's better to eat cooked fruits than raw, um, because raw actually is, is better. If, I mean, if you cook your food, it's much better for the digestion uh, than raw. And uh, in the winter, your body is a bit more lazy than in the summer. So um, if you just make everything easier for your digestive system, the better it's going to be. And we will thank you for that. And um, one that thinks about the winter is um, in Chinese medicine, we each season are related to an emotion as well. And um, winter is related to fears and anxiety. And um, this is why that uh, winter time is good for meditation. And uh, because it's related as well to bladder, it's a really good moment to actually exercise the feeling of letting go. Um, it's good to reflect on what we've done during the year, but not to keep it in. Um, and usually most of the time in the winter, people get really anxious, really scared is um, about what they've done, what is gonna happen uh, because it's winter time, are they gonna get sick? And uh, fear anxiety actually um, make the kidney weaker. So it will act if this is um, and then actually, and it will become, um, um, what do you say? I'm trying to find like simple words for people to understand. Um, if, you, if you're stressed, it means your kidney will get really hard and contract. And then it, will, it won't be able to relax and just to, um, to release the, the energy. And, and well, in Chinese medicine, we call it qi which is like, we all born with a certain amount of energy, that vital energy. And the older we get, uh, we're losing a bit. There's no way to, to make it, to replenish, to, to add it more of, qi, of what we call jing. So year after year, we're losing a bit of this jing. So if we the kidney are more contracted, then we're losing even more. So this is why it's always better that during the winter time, we are spending, trying to be not so stressed. I know it's difficult with now with the pandemic and, and, and the Christmas situation and all of this, but we also say that everything, nothing is permanent in life. So it will get better at some point. And this is where that is a good time to start if you haven't done it before to start meditate. And, uh, and yeah, so. I don't know, does it make, does it resonate or make sense or? <laughs> I think that's great. And you know, I mean, this is definitely a time where anxiety levels are, are heightened. So our kidney energy is for sure being really challenged uh, at the moment and has been challenged throughout the, throughout the year. So in a way heading into the season that really relates to the kidneys and because this is the season of rest, that 
that feels nice. It feels really comforting in a way of, okay, so we're actually moving into a season where we can take care of this a little bit by just really having a look at how we eat um, and, and to kind of like strengthen, strengthen the kidneys that we might not have been quite aware that they were also got challenged with all of this anxiety around us or that we might have noticed in our own, in our own system. So um, I think that's, I think that's great. That's, that just knowing that feels really, really kind of comforting. I like the fact how I like how you're describing the foods. So you didn't even list the foods, but you said they they should be bitter, round, black. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, black yeah. is the color of winter. I'm wearing black today. <laughs> but yeah, so it kind of means I don't need to do that kind of big a study, right? So I, you know, I I know I think you mentioned like cabbage or something, or you know things that are around that. I, you know if you go shopping and you're kind of selecting your vegetables and your things you can think about that so or your, your dish is not too dry something that cooks for a long time um you know like black beans and stuff so i think that's great you were i remember you were also talking about this creating a healthy plate tell me about what that what that means i think there's kind of like a, you've got some ideas about what should be on a plate of food um yeah well, well, most important, most important that, just before you ask that, sorry to jump in, I know I just asked you a question, but anyone who joined us a little bit late who's watching on uh, Facebook Live, if you have any questions, please submit them in the chat so that we can uh, have enough time to get to them at the end, hopefully, or you can leave a comment on Facebook as well, I'll try to, to get to that. So any questions that are popping up, put them in the chat, please, so that we can, and we'll just take whatever comes first. Okay, sorry. So yes, yeah. um, what's my question? A healthy plate, talk to me about that. Yeah, well, the most important is to eat uh, seasonal. So um, you have to eat what's, um, what you have in season. So, um, for, but yeah, for healthy plates, usually people say, so what should I eat? Um, well, there's not really like one perfect healthy plate. Um, I know it doesn't really help what I'm saying. But the most important is that we call it, you have to eat the rainbow and your plate have to be colorful. Um, we usually eat with our eyes first. Um, your plate has to look beautiful. If your plate doesn't look nice, then you're not gonna wanna eat it. Um, so usually we eat with our eyes, then with, this, with our nose and then last with our mouth. So this is why it's important that first of all, that it looks nice, it smells good and then you eat it. Um, but to give like a rough idea of what a plate should be, it's um, usually we have like carbohydrates, proteins, and a mix of vegetable, like greens and root vegetable. And then if you can, you can have some fermented or pickled foods. Um, what I mean by roots and, and green vegetable, um, it's a mix to like to have root vegetable um, and greens. It's to bring a bit of sweetness in your dish, like usually to avoid as well some hypoglycemia or sugar rush. Um, when people say, oh, I'm eating really healthy, 80% of the people actually don't eat vegetable. Um, I mean, I live here now in Portugal and I feel that people in Portugal eat much more vegetable than in, in other countries, but people don't really eat um, vegetable. And most of the time, they don't even know how to cook them. Um, some people even buy them already frozen or in can. Uh, I mean, if it's the, if before they never ate vegetable and this is the first step for them to do it, I'm not against it. I mean, it's a start. Um, but yes, there's plenty of vegetable out there, not only broccoli or lettuce or beans, like the green beans. Um, and this is why sometimes the best thing to do, if you go to the market, look what you have at the moment in the season, just pick like um, anything. It has to be colorful. It has to be pink, orange, greens, yellow, everything. And the carbs and the protein are important. Um, usually people, and we talk about the carbs in a bit uh, after, um, but it's important that you're, it's a complete plate. And usually this is, I talk that for lunch, for lunchtime. Um, 
because in the morning you can have, I mean, my favorite uh, breakfast will be porridge, but I know it's not for everyone. But I know for in the morning, it's important that your breakfast is comforting. Uh, if you have something too sweet, then you will crush in, in the middle of the morning. If you have something too heavy, then you will feel like completely like sluggish and you won't do much during your day. Um, in the evening, it's always better to have a light dinner and usually two to three hours before to go to bed. Um, it's better not to eat too, too heavy because otherwise your body and your organs, especially the liver, won't be able to detox properly. And then you're gonna wake up in the morning, still feeling full, not really well. And um, yeah, so if you want to eat the most or it's at lunchtime, lunchtime should be your biggest meal. Um, or if you want to eat something naughty or anything, it has to be during lunchtime. So if you want a pizza, have it for lunchtime, definitely not for dinner. <laughs> Last time I talked to my parents and they were having dinner at 9 p.m. And then she said, oh, I'm having duck and a tortilla, which is egg and potatoes, rice and beans. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like protein after protein after proteins. And no, I think that we have like some bit of a salad on the side just to make it nice. But yeah, and they eat healthy. So this is what I'm saying. It's should be, it, your plate should be like a balance and you shouldn't have like three quarter of carbs and a tiny bit of uh, vegetable and maybe once one or two, three beans on top of it. It's good that you have a good balance of it that you make like, I don't know, 30 to 40% of the carbs, the other one of um, protein and 25 of vegetable and just to make like quite like a balanced plate. So that's what I usually recommend. So, but yeah, what's your plate? What do you eat? Um, well, <laughs> that's not very there, but I, I noticed that when I, when, uh, when I'm uh, at yours for, for, for food, that you always just, you know, there's always a little bit of sort of random cabbage <laughs> served on the side you know and 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 deliciously so um or that you take extra care of all of your ingredients in your dressings or you know like suddenly there's something else coming out of the oven and like you were saying there's like a little root vegetable or something coming coming out um so i yeah and i really i really noticed that how you just take care of that of that side dish that just adds that uh, that balance um but you know that bit of green or you know whatever whatever it is um you were going to talk about carbohydrates i love the sound of that i mean i love carbs probably a little bit too much i love potatoes so are you telling me that's good for me can i eat potatoes yeah no, nothing is bad in food it's that's the thing like if you want one most of the people they come to me and say oh my god i'm eating this is that bad is it no nothing is bad and and the thing is that the most important, you can, you can eat everything, but in moderation. It's of course, just don't eat like a kilo of potatoes a week. That's not gonna be good for you. Even eating a kilo of broccoli, I actually got sick just eating too much of greens, vegetable, and that's not good either. Um, the thing is you have to eat in a balanced way. And for the carbs, it's, yeah, people are scared of carbohydrates. They think, oh my God, if I'm eating too much carbohydrate, I'm going to get fat and, oh, I'm going to too much sugar. Oh, that's not good for me. Oh, I can't digest it. The thing is that we need carbohydrates. Um, in the, the body needs three macronutrients in the body to function. It's the carbohydrate, the protein, and the fat. Carbohydrate, it's what's going to give your body energy. The protein, this is what's going to help your body to build muscles. And the fats, which is the cholesterol, is not that bad. This is where your hormones are coming from. So if you don't eat fats, then you're going to have an hormone imbalance. So usually you have those diets, like keto diet. I'm not going to go into that. It's a different subject. But if you don't eat carbs, then your body is going to look for energy in your protein. And this is bad because this is bad for the kidney. So um, 
the thing is the difference is they have different type of carbohydrates. You have what you call the simple carbs and the complex carbohydrates. What people eat, 80% of the population eats the simple carbohydrate, which is like simple sugar. It's all refined foods, white rice, biscuits, white flowers. Um, yeah, everything you will find on the supermarket, anything processed. Um, carbohydrate is in everything, even drinks, uh, vegetable, fruits, uh, everything you eat. Um, but then you have the complex carbohydrate, which is in the whole grain, like brown rice, um, like all the whole grain, the beans, the vegetable, the fruits, and those are good carbohydrates. So the differences between the two is that the simple carbohydrates will be absorbed really quickly in your bio, in your body, in your bloodstream. Means that you're gonna have a sugar pick in maybe an hour or two, and then you're gonna have a sugar crush. Then it means you have no energy. Um, there's no nutrients, no vitamin in this. The complex carbohydrates, because they are more complex, they will take more time to give you the energy. So actually you can keep on much longer with it. And actually it contains vitamins and nutrients and fibers that you really need to have a good um, digestive system. So that's the difference. And potatoes is starchy. So this is all the starch food, which is beans, all the potatoes, vegetable. And some people are scared of potatoes. Um, I don't eat much of the potatoes, but if I have a choice, I will rather eat potatoes than white rice or like a pizza or something, which is carbohydrates. So it's a question of choice. Uh, you can eat potatoes, but if you eat potatoes, maybe don't, don't eat them with white rice. With some people just do that. They have potato, rice and bread in the same plate, which is this is carbs and carbs and carbs. And all of these are, are really starchy carbs, simple carbs, and really difficult to, for your body to digest. Because what happens is when you eat carbs, they go first into your mouth, then they go then to the liver, which it is going to be transformed as glucose. Then if you eat too much carbs, then it will be too much for your liver to digest, and then you're not going to feel well about it. Then if you have too much carbs, too much glucose, then the extra of it will become fat. And that's when you be, that's how bad cholesterol be, uh, are created. So um, that's the thing. It has to be a balance. You can eat carbs, and you have to eat carbs because carbs is important. That's uh, if you don't eat carbs, that is really important for the brain um, because carbs actually give you glucose, which is energy, is, is actually what feeds the brain. And if you don't give um, glucose to your brain, then your brain's gonna go in panic mode and then you're gonna become stressed and then you release cortisol. And if you release too much cortisol, then this is not, it's not good for the immune system because cortisol is a longevity hormone. Then you're gonna age much quickly. So carbs is important. So go, you don't, I wouldn't say go crazy with carbs, but just choose your carbs. You can have from time to time pizza or white bread or white rice, but brown rice is not that bad. Um, for like 30 years, my mother never wanted to eat brown rice until she came to my place last year and I cooked brown rice and I didn't tell her about it. And the day after, I said, oh, tonight we're going to eat brown rice. I said, oh, I don't like it. I said, well, you ate it last night and you were fine with it. The thing is people have those ideas of like whole grain that, that like taste differently or they taste weird. Well, they took long, they, it took much, it takes longer to cook them, of course, but they're much better for you. And yeah, I think if, if you want to have bread, just like, have a bread with whole grain, like um, like a different flowers, like rye bread or spelt or kamut. Um, you can have from time to time a white flour bread, it's okay. But this is the thing, if it's, it's all about balance in your plate. You can, you know, if you want to have bread, then maybe don't have potato and rice in the same meal. Then maybe you can have it for dinner. Um, but yeah, cutting out the carbs, it's, it's, not, it's really bad um, for the people. And you will have like long lasting um, um, problem, especially for women. 
so with hormones and kidney so yeah and yeah don't don't be scared of carbs i know it's sugar but body needs sugar body needs fats and it's just the thing you have to choose your fat you have to choose your your sugar people sometimes decide to go i'm gonna go on a fat-free diet which is not good because you need fat to for your hormones to to develop and to be there and if you don't eat sugar as well then you're going to have hypoglycemia and that's not good either but you can make a choice you can have a, a good sugar which is um cooked fruits sweet vegetable like carrot pumpkin um added more onion in your stew uh you can have like like no, maple syrup or um, rice jelly rice syrup things like it, rather than brown sugar cane or all of this which is no good and the same for fats you can have more nuts seeds beans um, nut butters um, a little bit of oil um, it's still better if you have fried foods or like like tons of oil or greasy food or eating out every day so yeah it's a um, it's a balance this is but I really believe that people really know in, inside of them that's what is good and what is not good. Sometimes it's really good to be reminded what's, what is need to be, what, what to, I think it's important sometimes, I would like to reassure people that we, you, we can eat everything. We should not be scared of food. And um, I don't believe in superfood, for example. Um, I think that every food is superfood. It's it really depends how you eat them, how you combine them, and how much you eat them as well. If you eat avocado every day, then that is not going to be good for you. And um, but if you eat them once in a while, it's good. So it depends. Um. <laughs> so I'm hearing I'm hearing balance basically, and that is, I guess when. Well, from both 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 sides, that is maybe not as scary as kind of thinking that you have to change your diet entirely. So just bringing some balance and everything in moderation is actually a relatively easy step, relatively, and it's going to be obviously different for everyone. But also what I'm hearing is that once you are actually uh, managing to balance things more, then also it is much easier to maintain your health. Um, so... We are actually already coming towards the end of this webinar as flown by. Um, if anybody still wants to ask a question, make sure you put that in a comment or in the chat function here for those of you who are in Zoom. There is one question here uh, from Christina. What about fruit in the winter? Are we, is that a good thing? What fruit, what are the winter fruits? Because say a lot of fruits are kind of more tropical, I guess. So what yeah. fruits should I be eating now that we're coming into winter? Well, the fruit you should be eating is the fruit that you are available in your country. Um, then if you live in Portugal, we have, at the moment we have apple, pear, clementine, oranges, persimmons, and that's a pomegranate, and that are the fruit you should, you should eat. I know it's very tempting to eat mangoes and pineapple and uh, all of those tropical and bananas, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, of course, if you eat one, it's okay. You're not going to die from it. But it's, it's, it's those, those fruits are made for tropical countries. And if, if they are there, it's for a reason. It's because it's hot there and they need the body to cool down. We don't need our body to be cooled down. We need our body to be warm. And uh, usually fruits are better in, um, in a winter if they are cooked. So um, cooked apple, cooked pear, it's really good. You can add some cinnamon on it. It's you put them in the oven with a bit of water, a bit of cinnamon, a bit of like maple syrup. It's a bit of caramelized and yeah, trust me, it will be much better than the mango. Takes a bit more time to make, but it's good. So, also there's fruit, fruit crumbles, right? So I can- Yeah. Water with that. <laughs> um, is there actually, this is something that I'm finding also like I really uh, 
used to anyway it depends a little bit on where i am and if it is really like seasonal and regional kind of fruit or not and in what i'm eating in combination with but often i'm afraid of eating fruit after a savory meal and so it's not so much seasonal um the question but is there a better time of the day to eat fruit or a better time in general like when i'm thinking of my meal times or whatever to eat fruit during the day Yes, the best moment to eat fruit is before your meal, because what happened to your the if if your everything salty like your if you eat like protein carbs and you see it actually takes much longer for the uh, body to digest, and fruit will go is really is faster. So for example, if you put your carbs and your protein like this on top in your stomach, and then on top of it you put the fruit in then you're going to create some acidity on top of it. So then you're going to have stomach ache. So because the fruit's going to fight to go underneath. But then if you do the opposite, if you eat the fruit first, then the fruit goes straight in your stomach and got digested and absorbed straight away. And then you can eat your meal. So yeah, the best time to eat fruit is before lunchtime or before dinner time. So you can eat them around 11 a.m. or in the afternoon around 4 or 5 p.m. It's better not after uh, not after your meal. It's not a good time. Is that due to the acidity, or is that actually to do with all sweet foods? So that leads me to think that maybe we should have dessert before dinner. Yeah, usually yes, it's yeah. better. So desserts basically just don't really make any any sense when it comes to. But not normally. Is you shouldn't have dessert every day. Um, it's usually better to give some time to your body to digest your meal. And then you can have, let's say two, three hours after, you can have a bit of sweetness in it. Usually if you have enough sweets in your meal, like if you have enough vegetable, like root vegetable, like carrot, or pumpkin, or anything, you won't crave for sweet after. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Sometimes people have, their meal are too salty or they eat like steak and potatoes and that's it. And a bit of green salad. And then of course there's no sweetness at all in, the, in that meal. So they will crave for something sweet or have like a coffee with two or three cubes of sugar inside. So that's not good. And, um, but yes, usually sweets uh, is usually better before or way after your meal to avoid that issue of acidity or acid reflux. Okay. Well, go to just one more final question. Um, I mean, you know, I like the sound of winter, we can rest, not too much kind of sweaty activity, <laughs> but Diana's asking, um, you know, what kind of workout we should maybe still be doing? I mean, do we not need to do anything for our muscle tone? And, is that, again, is there a good time for that before lunch, after lunch, in the morning? What about exercising? Mm -hmm. Well, kind of work at like nothing really um, extreme. Like, I mean, if you do like gentle yoga, some Qigong, some stretching, uh, like not walking, um, yeah, exercise like that. Uh, if you sweat too much, if you go for like, extreme sport like boxing or running for like kilometers is not good as your body needs to rest in the winter you should not do that no and uh, for when to do it well this really depends of your body um, it really depends of uh, if you are more a morning person if you are um, an afternoon person um, I usually say to people they are their best doctor uh, I'm, I'm only here to to help them and guide them you know, but I'll usually look at what people eat and what they do, and they usually know what is best for them. And uh, some people just don't like to do anything in the morning and they, they feel more awake in the afternoon. So that's when they should do the workout. And yeah, vice versa. If you feel sleepy in the afternoon, just do your exercise in the morning. So yeah, usually before eating, not after. That's the only things. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I do want to kind of wrap this up. Um, yeah. I'm what I'm also hearing really that it's very individual, really. It comes down to really your 
your makeup, your own constitution. And I guess that's where the kind of individual consultations come in, where you, that's the way that you work with people, right? So you really look at every aspect of, of their life and what is going on to then actually support people specifically with some ideas about their nutrition. So maybe just um, briefly tell us how people get in touch with you and what you, what you offer um as i'm sure that some people might well want to follow up with you yes yes well yes so yeah usually in the consultation that's and i don't really i don't change people's life or diet i don't try to remove things i'm usually trying to add in things so um that's one thing so i'm not going to say it's okay just give up everything just stop eating what you do and i switch i wouldn't do that because i know otherwise i wouldn't have any clients and um but um, yeah, so um, I have a website called um, anaturalpot.com. Uh, then um, yeah, at the moment I'm offering a 30 minute free consultation, which is an introduction. Um, it means that um, people can get in touch with me and I can know, they can explain to me what they are after and I uh, can explain how I will be able to help them. Um, if they decide to have a full-on consultation, I usually like to people to feel like some questions and give me like a food diary, what they eat, uh, if they have any symptoms. Um, I'm also, um, I can also look at any um, specific uh, disease if they have, I can. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's really like, um, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't try to change um, people's life. I'm just trying to help them to find um, a solution to feel better with their body, with their life. And um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can't hear you. Sorry, I realized that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, thank you. I, you know, I mean, personally, uh, that's really what you know. Anyone offering any type of therapeutic support, you know, should really be focusing on is that support, uh, you know, for the for the person um, in their in their own healing journey. So, um, and you know, we can't fix anyone anyway. So, um, no, to I'm not here to fix people. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. For, your time i'm just going to at this point end the recording and the live stream if people want to just kind of hang here for one minute that's um also very welcome <laughs>